Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like this video if you found it useful and also subscribe to the channel so you can see any further videos I post which may interest you. So today I am going to show you the effects of a broken neutral or a lost neutral on a three-phase power system. So that's also known as a floating neutral. So in my test rig here, you'll see we have let me move that down a bit. We have three phase power incoming with the neutral here. The phases are red, yellow, and blue, and the black is the neutral. So to confirm that those are indeed the phases and the voltages on them, we have 240 volts on the red phase. We have 242 there on the yellow phase, and we have 241 on the blue phase. Now you'll notice there's a white cable instead of a yellow. Originally they were white on that phase and they changed it to yellow. So I've mixed them just to make that noticeable there that there was a switch in color coding. These are the original British phase color codings and they probably still apply in uh, New Zealand and Australia, India and possibly also Hong Kong. Although I think Hong Kong may be harmonized with the European color coding these days. So. If you have a look at the test rig now, each light bulb is connected to a phase. So this red phase runs the left light bulb, the yellow phase is running the middle light bulb, and the blue phase is running the right hand side light bulb. Now if I switch them on, you'll see each of them is working. If I switch off the neutral here, that switch is to simulate the broken neutral. So each light bulb has a switch and the neutral has a switch as well to simulate that broken neutral. Now in this case here, each of these light bulbs is a 77 watt 240 volt halogen from Osram. So they are identical bulbs, which means in this case, the neutral will carry no current as the phases, the sum of each of the phases together will give you a voltage of zero because they are out of phase with each other and that's how they generate these voltages. So on the neutral in this instance, there is no current actually flowing. This is very rare to find that sort of situation in the real world. That's why the neutral is important. It always carries the imbalance current back to the transformer. Now, if I switch off this neutral, there is no actual difference in the brightness of the bulbs that you can notice. There is a slight change you'll see here from the false neutral now back here to the, the real neutral when it's off because there is a little difference with what's generating and what's flowing in the neighborhood and these bulbs being equal, they have balanced out. So there's a two volt difference. If I switch the neutral back on, the two volts disappears. So somewhere along the way, one of the phases is slightly more loaded and is making the difference in the neighborhood. So now with the neutral off like that, and let's go, we'll check red phase voltage is 240, yellow phase there is 244, and 240 there on the blue. Now to simulate what's going to happen here, if, if I change these light bulbs. Let's leave this one as the 77 watt on the side here. So I'm going to change the other two for different wattages. So this one in the middle, I will make the candle bulb. Now remember, this one is going to be a 40 watt bulb. This one is a 60 watt bulb. So we have 60 watt, 40 watt, 77 watt. So the 77 watt on the blue phase will be the loaded phase. The one with, in the middle, the yellow phase, will be the, the least loaded phase. And then the 60 watt on the red will be not quite in the middle, but almost in the middle of the, th of the three phases there. So if I switch on now, you'll see each bulb works. Slightly different brightnesses, the halogen being much brighter because it's also much more efficient. And the voltages are, as always, consistent with their... So there's 237, it's changed slightly. That one is 243, and that one is 241. Now what I'm going to do here, and you'll notice the bulbs will change in brightness, I'm going to break the neutral. 
slight shift. I don't know if you noticed that, but there's a slight shift. So now the red phase to that neutral there is running at 255. And just to prove that, if I switch on the neutral again, it corrects to 237. So broken neutral, you can see the blue phase bulb has actually dimmed quite a bit there. So we've got 256 there. Now this one in the middle is going to be ridiculously high. There we go, 292 volts. That is way out of the range of normal 230 volt appliances. They should run 230 volts up or down 10%. So that's 207 to 253. So again, put the neutral back and you can see it goes back to 244. The end one with a neutral running is 243. With the neutral broken, look at that, we're down to 185 volts. So that is extremely low and is not really usable. It, appliances will work on that, but it's not the best voltage for appliances. They will struggle to run on that. So let's put the neutral back so we don't blow that other bulb there. So that's, that's what happens when a neutral is lost. The phases will change in voltage significantly. The one with the biggest load will drop down. You'll notice dim lights, appliances not working in that. The phases, the other two phases will then shoot up in voltage depending on their loads. And the one with the least load will skew very high. And there you will notice that appliances will blow. There'll be popping sounds in that and light bulbs will be either very bright or will also blow. Now, what I'm going to do just to show a slightly different take on this as well, is I'm going to switch off the red phase. Now we've got a 40 watt and a 77 watt bulb here. So what happens here is they are, if I break the neutral, they will now be running in series over 400 volts because the neutrals are joined. So the current flows from the phase into the bulb, out the bulb into the neutral, through the neutral to the other bulb, into the other phase back. So you have yellow and blue phase, which were running at about 420 volts earlier. They are now at 423. So, but because these are not even the wattages, when I switch this off, you'll notice this little 40 watt bulb will be very bright and the 77 watt is going to be very, very dim. It may even blow that 40 watt. So there we go. Look how bright that is. And that now to the false neutral is running at, I don't know if you can see that, but it's 325 volts through that poor little light bulb. The other one is getting only 96 volts. So that shows you just how that's skewed out there. That will definitely start blowing appliances on that. The clever thing with this is let, if I switch off that bulb, I'm going to replace the 60 watt here with a 77 again, so they're even. So now we have two 77 watt bulbs, okay? When we do the same thing and they run in, in series like that, the voltage will then half exactly because they are equal bulbs. So if I break the neutral now, you see they went slightly dimmer and the voltage running on that bulb there is, sorry, let me make the contact there, is 206 and on the blue phase is 208. So they're slightly off from perfectly even. There we go, 207 and 208. So the bulbs are not exactly identical, but they're pretty close. I mean, that being one volt out from each other. That is actually pretty usable, 206, 207 volts. That's still usable. But the catch is if one bulb is removed, the other one will stop working because this is now series. It's like Christmas lights. So let me take out this one. The other one's a little hot. And I take it out. You can see it's gone. But if I put it back, they both come back on. So that proves it's a series circuit. If I switch the neutral back on, they both go brighter. I can remove this bulb and the other one is still working. I hope this uh, explains some of the workings of three phase for you and why a broken or floating neutral is such a problem in a three phase circuit. So it's not a common occurrence, but a neutral can be stolen. It can also be corroded or it can just break from age sometimes or a bad joint. Um, the theft of a neutral at a substation as well, that, that has happened sometimes. So these things can all cause these problems. 
to prevent this from blowing your devices and that you, you can't rely on a surge arrester or a surge arrester in a plug top or the ones that are in your distribution board or fuse board those are only designed for impulses of current like a lightning strike they will earth that for a sustained over voltage they will not last they will burn out very quickly and the, the appliances will still be damaged so if in that case you need to speak to your electrician about some sort of device that protects from over or under voltage which is either going to trip a breaker or disconnect the circuit completely and that will monitor the voltage it will see the voltages out of the 230 range plus or minus say 15 percent and then it will disconnect the, the the circuits they usually can be programmed to what range you want on there so don't forget if this was helpful to you if you enjoyed it you found it informative give it the thumbs up and remember to share it as well to anyone you think will enjoy and uh, yeah also subscribe to the channel because i have some other different videos coming um, including my burglar alarm system with alarm floodlights that switch on when the alarm is triggered and things like that so i think those will interest you too thanks very much cheers bye